Welcome to Instant Rave. This is uh, Thomas from Rave the Planet. And with me tonight, Enzo Elia Hello. from Compost Records. Not only uh, you have a uh, big discography actually, but uh, your last uh, release on Compost Disco yes. was really, really nice. Thanks a lot. I'm um, happy to hear that. So, how did you um, get in touch with um, with Compass Records in the first place? Uh, basically, this this is a funny question because uh, I moved uh, in Berlin uh, in 2008, and uh, then I was looking for some uh, new label for my records. And uh, I in this day in this time I was I used to ship a CD mm -hmm. with demo. Just because I was finding something uh, new for promote my demo, and um, I sent, if I remember right, to Compost a CDR in a pizza box. Oh, that's, that that <laughs> cat catches the eye. This is they I, had to I, open I, it. I think so, and I, I I'm not sure, but I think the answer was we don't like the track, but mm -hmm. we like the idea of using a pizza box, no? And then and after that. Uh, I got the email from Michael and uh, then was easy. I sent uh, some uh, new track, new project, uh, day by day, mm -hmm. and uh, we found the right one. <laughs> and that uh, was... Uh, so that's, that's a long way to go from the first demo till the campus uh, disco. A couple of years, yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Um, so uh, tell me your, your Berlin story. Uh, you mentioned that you moved in 2008. Yes. Uh, what, uh, what was your motivation back then? Because as far as I know, it was a little bit different from all the other DJs and music producers that thought, okay, Berlin is the place to be now. Yeah, basically it was not a proper motivation. I was just uh, choose Berlin uh, as an experience uh, just for find new inspiration for my music and also, um, of course, new connection for a potential collaboration with artists uh, and the label, why not? But uh, I was not uh, crazy about uh, this uh, moment, uh, this Berlin calling moment, no? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's it. Basically, now I'm here in Berlin almost since uh, 12 years and uh, I found my balance. And uh, of course, I found also a good way for uh, release my music and uh, it's important. Did you find your favorite beer yet? Uh, yes, I have a couple. Of <laughs> okay, so since we are in Hotel Berlin Berlin, uh, you can now uh, also uh, use the room service and order a beer for, you, for yourself. If you like, you just press uh, the button number nine. Sehr gerne. <laughs> Allora, vi rete che non è zwei beer, bitte. Zwei beer, bitte, ja. Yeah. Uh, Berliner? Ja. Yeah. Ich danke Ihnen. So, yeah, your German is pretty good. Uh, not really, but uh, I try to do my best. <laughs> Yeah, it's been uh, it's been more than a couple of years. Yeah, uh, so, I have to. Uh, and uh, you live in uh, Neukölln. How, I live in Neukölln. How do you like it there? But I, I'm I'm quite lucky because I live in Rixdorf. It's a small dorf uh, in Neukölln. It's also an historic place, and I found uh, very quiet, and I like it a lot. Also. A lot of things are changing right now. It's a bit more uh, hype than uh, 10 years ago. Uh, somebody's complaining about this uh, centrifugation, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but uh, I found that not uh, that bad. I mean, it's more or less uh, it's the destiny for many European uh, capital. Yeah, and still, so, so you are more in the area that is uh, calm, and quiet, yes. but you have still access easily to the more, more busy uh, parts of, of, of town that are not so busy anymore. Uh, what do you think of the, of the situation now? I, I have to ask you, I probably uh, have, uh, we all have enough of this uh, topic, but uh, how 
do you feel the scene is changing and what can uh, happen next? I don't know, it's a very big question this one. Of course, it's not an happy moment, for, especially for the music business and for the club culture, of course. But um, I think most of the um, people are used to work on music business are try to find the other solution for spread music and um, invent new uh, forms of communication as well, like this, for example. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the creative time now and something new will come up. It's a, it's, it's a different input mm -hmm. in the waiting time. Yeah, that it, sounds uh, kind of positive. Yeah, I mean, uh, we will see. Uh, personally, I'm more focused on uh, um, thinking about uh, my mistake mm -hmm. and uh, try to change something in my music, uh, try to change something in my communication, uh, try to change something uh, um, in my, also in my life. Why not? Because music is part of my life. So do you uh, plan your releases ahead? Do you? How do you think that the situation changes uh, your your plan as a producer and, and a label uh, owner? Uh, I, I, as a label owner and as a producer, basically, uh, I, I think this is my daily job. Mm -hmm. Then I have to go on, I have to deliver music, but not because somebody's waiting, not because I'm hype DJ and somebody's waiting the, the new Enzoelia records, just because I found the right way. I mean, um, we, we like to, to serve DJ with our music um, because we love to do. And uh, it doesn't matter if they are playing or if they, are, they cannot play because the party is not gonna happen. I don't know, maybe for another year, <laughs> who knows it. Yeah. But uh, I like to, to release my music and I like to work uh, with uh, my artists and uh, going on with the label. So uh, what would be uh, for you really important now uh, to also share with other producers how to stay relevant in these times and if we finally see clubs reopening uh, what would you suggest for a comeback from after the lockdown uh, be yourself for sure and uh, be more focused on the music and um, um, and nothing more. It's very difficult to, to um, figure out something, especially today. Everything is possible, um, concerning music especially. Um, maybe uh, <laughs> it happens that you are doing a track and you are finding this track very ugly or not finished but somebody maybe love it and maybe it can be a potential hit then uh, my advice is go on yeah. with music and with the production and uh, waiting a better moment you 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 mentioned uh, just um, off the record uh, before you mentioned that um, you don't uh, press vinyl right now anymore uh, you, you started a new label that is digital yes and there is also a reason for it why you don't want to press uh, 12 inches i i love vinyl and i was growing up with vinyl and i am i am a big respect for label like this one that uh, used to work uh, with vinyl and uh, they invest energy, money, and a lot of passion for a piece of plastic, because many, for many people, this is a piece of plastic. For me, it's like a book. Mm -hmm. And, um, but for sure, today it's very difficult because the life of, the life of a track, uh, it's more or less two weeks, maybe one month. 
and um, vinyl is a huge investment and a, a, there is a, a long waiting time for uh, release it and that's why we decided to we, when i say we it's because my partner in crime are lear and musubeshi on my label called buttress we decided to choose uh, for the digital market which is more uh, easy for us and also easy to handle mm -hmm. uh, how do you um, how do, what would you say about your collaboration with compost uh, they still put a lot of effort into each release your 12 inch on compost disco looks beautiful with the beautiful artwork by uh, benjamin uh, right. Uh, you also got to, to choose uh, the cover, the, the, the cover, cover right? yeah. which, is, which is a collection of his uh, art pieces. Art uh, pieces, yes, of course, and it's also a kind of a, a decoupage of, from all the from old cover, which I found very interesting. It's just another uh, way to reinvent the past, no? And yeah, I was uh, I was in love with the cover, and I am in love with what they are doing because uh, you can feel that there is something special. There is a, a solid uh, structure and solid way of thinking behind the label concept, uh, which, for my opinion, it makes a huge difference today. I mean. Uh, you can feel straight the difference between a one-man band and a team. But you and your label are two-man bands, uh, right? Three-man band. Three. <laughs> Three-man three band. Yeah. So, so of, of course, it's uh, easier than than pulling it off uh, on your own. What what are the uh, are you the um, is your label mostly for your own music or are you also the NR? Uh, let's say I am the a and uh, but also with the other two guys that I mentioned. But uh, no, the label is basically open. We are um, producing music uh, for uh, new artists and uh, right now we, we are going to have uh, our Cross Vault EP, which is a collection of um, various artists uh, that used to work with us and also some new one. And uh, I'm really proud of it. I mean, it's like uh, basically it's a very simple label. We don't have any marketing strategy or um, something very strategic behind it. And uh, it works. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. Uh, do you feel like you have learned something from the experience of the labels that you worked with before? Yes, of course. I learn uh, something every every day, and uh, especially during these twelve years in Berlin, I was learning a lot of things uh, from my German partner and uh, from my German colleague, you know? and uh, I got the chance to to reach several steps. That's why I decided also to come here. And, and going back to those uh, days, uh, at the very beginning uh, of your stay in Berlin, you've been also doing uh, a lot with uh, in, in the music industry, but uh, but uh, not uh, really focusing on on disco and and indie stuff. Uh, you, you've been uh, pro co-producing uh, other artists as well, right? And uh, what was what was exactly the beginning for you? How how did you enter? The, uh, the music industry because it sounded to me much more um, serious than just uh, moving to Berlin and, and playing records at, uh, in, in bars and clubs. Basically I was living in, uh, in Italy, in Bologna and after that I was um, having a collaboration with a, a big label and after that we got the chance to re-edit some of the Italo House uh, track from uh, this catalog, this huge catalog, and uh, with my ex-manager, we had the idea to call this. He had the idea to call this project Balearic Gabba, and uh, which was something uh, a bit uh, uh, a music kaleidoscopic. 
uh, of uh, several style uh, with a fresh edit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. Um, seemed much more balearic than than Gava. Yeah, much. Um, yeah, basically the the idea was um, to to play something. Uh, um balearic uh, but with the influence influence of uh, other style of music also like gabba which uh, the the previous generation balearic generation doesn't have because it was too early mm -hmm. Uh, so what's uh, in the pipeline? Uh, uh, you mentioned the compilation. What other releases? Compilation. Are... Uh, then uh, I got the honor to remix uh, um, track of the last album of uh, Clara Hill. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be out on uh, Black Pearl uh, in uh, two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I was mm, making. Uh, uh, edit of um, a classic uh, Chicago house track um, uh, from we have Hello. your beer. Oh. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much. Welcome. Need opera? Vielen Dank. Ja. Bye. Ciao. Danke. Um, okay, okay, and uh, uh, yeah, let's let's move on to your DJ sets because we're gonna hear you playing tonight um, for our instant rave. Um, how do you approach um, situations like this uh, streaming uh, situations where you don't really have the crowd in front of you? Yeah. What, what do you think, uh, how much do you miss the, the clubs? I mean, I miss a lot, even if I'm not a hype DJ and I'm, I was not playing a many gig. And uh, concerning the streaming, uh, I'm uh, proud and happy to be here, but it's one of the first streaming I made. Then I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I will let you know later. Maybe. <laughs> okay, we we'll drink to that. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks a lot for having me. So, um, about um, about the, the, the scene in um, Italy, uh, you still travel, I mean, when it was uh, easier during those... those um, the, 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 during this decade, you've you stayed in touch, obviously, with the with what's happening in uh, Italy. Mm, you, you mean with the club culture? Yeah. Not really, not really, mm -hmm. especially because I was working as a DJ in other country, which was more uh, easy for me um, without any particular reason, just because I got some requests from other country. Mm -hmm. Then I, I'm not really. Um, well connected with uh, Italian uh, promoter or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so if uh, would it be easy for you to compare the uh, the two worlds before uh, you moved to Berlin, the scene in uh, in Italy and and here? Not, uh, no. It's it's. I think it's for uh, my memories. It's mm -hmm. something uh, something different. Um, the the Berlin uh, electronic music culture is uh, has a um, deep roots I think in the society. Um, I don't know in Italy if it's if it's the same. We have several spots uh, which with very interesting. Uh, um, situation and promoter and um, they they did also something very important for the music uh, back in the days but actually I I cannot tell you more because uh, I don't know what's happened it's like um, I was f finding the um, the Berlin club culture a bit more uh, spontaneous and uh, open and um, the people want to enjoy the dance floor uh, without any dress code. Uh, just uh, going out, uh, drink a beer, listen music uh, and uh, have a party. That's it. 
Yes, yes, I, I believe this is what re people really miss now. You mentioned uh, the, 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 the roots uh, of the Berlin scene that they go very deep and, and very long back in time. I, yeah, yes, of course, I think this is very important and it makes a, a, big, uh, a big difference. I mean, uh, especially today when everything is possible, as I, as I said, it's like um, the, the life of the, of the music or, or basically the attention of the people on the music is very fast. Uh, mm -hmm. If you compare that with my uh, teenager's time, uh, was like uh, we used to play a mixtape from Dr. Morte for uh, eight, nine months in our ghetto blaster, waiting the new one. And was very difficult to have a new one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, possibilities, do you think that uh, something that big and that phenomenal and that revolutionary like the old Love Parade is still possible nowadays? I think so. I think so. The new generation uh, is very curious and uh, there is a lot of uh, young guy, very clever, that they want to discover uh, the feeling of the previous generation and uh, which one was the spirit of it. And uh, I think this is possible. Why not? I think, yeah, definitely. We believe so. Believe so. And I hope and so. <laughs> And we really hope so. So please support the cause. We really want to make it happen. And uh, I'm inviting you to Enzo Elias DJ Mix tonight. Thanks a lot. <laughs>